The Old Testament reading for this, the 25th Sunday after Pentecost, is taken from the prophet Hosea in the 11th chapter. Here God says, When Israel was a child, I loved him, and out of Egypt I called my son. But the more I called Israel, the further they went from me. They sacrificed to the Baals, and they burnt incense to images. It was I who taught Ephraim to walk, taking them by the arms, but they did not realize it was I who healed them. I led them with cords of human kindness, with ties of love. I lifted the yoke from their neck and bent down to feed them. How can I give you up, Ephraim? How can I hand you over, Israel? How can I treat you like Adam? How can I make you like Zebim? My heart is changed within me. All my compassion is aroused. I will not carry out my fierce anger, nor will I turn and devastate anything. For I am God and not man, the Holy One among you. I will not come in wrath. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Entrusted me with five talents. 
See, I've gained five more. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with the two talents also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two talents. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. And the man who had received the one talent came. Master, he said, I know that you are a hard man, harvesting when you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And so I was afraid and went out and hid your talent in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well, then you should have put my money on deposit with the banker so that when I retain, return, I would have received it back with interest. Take the talent from him and give it to the one who has the ten talents. For everyone who has will be given more, and he will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what he has, will be taken from him. And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness, and there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Here end of the gospel. Last Sunday option. 
is simply there's the proper's for each Sunday that falls in a given period, like a week. Okay? And, um, but to leave it to be the 25th means most years you don't get to that reading. The stewardship reading. Right? And I don't know what causes that. I suppose some of it, I think, is at one time, I remember when I first entered into ministry, there was a great emphasis on stewardship. It seemed like every sermon was about stewardship, right? And, uh, and so the pendulum, you know, kind of swings sometimes, right? And it's kind of swung the other way where we don't ever talk about stewardship. I don't know if that's the case and why they placed it where they did or not. But we're going to talk about stewardship because it's part of God's right? Now, by the way, I hate this. This is not my favorite thing to preach on. I did not like to preach on the money, right? Um, we're going to preach on stewardship today so your pastor can buy a new Learjet. The old one he has is not even good. Yeah, no. <laughs> but that's part of the problem, isn't it? That you have TV evangelists and some of these people, right? They talk about money and, and they're living high on the hog. And they're not really using the money for the sake of the kingdom necessarily, but they're using it for their own purposes. And so, you know, there's kind of a dislike already because of the money, right? The church, all she ever talks about is money. But I have to because Jesus does. And so, here we go. Here's these texts that are dealing with this, even though it goes against every bone in my body. Uh, last year, I did something I've never, I don't think I've ever done before. I went to businesses around the area and asked if they would give a gift. So White's Meat Market gave us a gift certificate to be auctioned off uh, for the youth to go to hire them. You don't know how hard that was for me to go do that. Okay, I just don't like it. Okay, But I got to do it, so sorry. There you go. But I think, actually, there's some pretty cool stuff in our particular stewardship emphasis and as Jesus does it. Now, um, so first of all, look what Jesus does here, right? He, he gives this parable uh, that reminds us, right, that the Lord wants to share with us in his happiness, right? His joy. Did you hear what he says to the two who actually acted like they believed the master or loved the master or wanted to help the master? What does he say? Come enter into your master's happiness, or some translations say, into your master's joy. And so the really cool thing, and God just seems to do this, is he wants to share his joy with us by using us as participants, as instruments in what he does. And he does this not just with stewardship, but he does this with life. Right? If you read the first uh, chapters of Genesis and the creation account, right? I like to say, I believe in the Big Bang Theory. I really don't. But I like to say, I believe in the Big Bang Theory. God said, let there be light, and bang, there was light. Right? And he creates out of nothing, at least in the beginning of the creation. But as time goes on, he begins to use instrumentality and especially the best one is with us, right? He tells Adam and Eve and all of us ever since, be fruitful and multiply. We get to be in the blessing of his creativeness. We get to share in the happiness of being creators, so to speak. That's pretty cool, right? Now, by the way, everything, right, since the fall is permeated with the fall. Original sin is at home everywhere. And so, right, so <clears throat> children are both blessing and bang. Right? Because they don't always do what you want them to do. Right? Um, but they are blessing. And, and you never, right, they never stop being your kids. Right? It doesn't matter how old they are, they're still your kids. You still have that parental affection for them, right? And you get to do what? You get to treat each of them as individuals. I tell people, I don't love my children all the same because they're individuals. I love them as individuals. How I love my oldest son who's a pastor is different than I love my second oldest son, Andy, as always. What I 
respect, how I treat, all based on my love for them as individuals. And of course, the Lord does that too. Did you notice in the parable? He gave the one guy five talents, the other guy two talents, and the one guy one talent. And what? According to their abilities. He treats all of us as individuals. Not all of us can do the same or uh, have the same gifts. They're all gifts. But not always the same. They're different, right? Paul makes this point, right? That some of us are eyes, and some of us are ears, and some of us are hands, and some of us are feet. And we all do what? Serve the body of Christ. But we are all different in who we are. And God loves us and uses us as instruments in different ways that we might share in his happiness and his joy. Just as he creates and continues to create through families and birth, right? So, too, through his mission to uh, proclaim the gospel to all, he does what? He uses us. We're his instruments. We're his servants, his stewards. He shares these things that we might bless others. He blesses us to be a blessing to others. That's what he desires to do. That's always been his MO, his modus operandi, his way of working. Always has been. And he blesses them, and he allows us to share in this. How cool is that? We get to share in the joy of the master. We get to be a blessing to others. Now, notice, too, that in the account uh, of, the, of the stewards and, and their talents, by the way, talent is a form of money. Talents were a amount of money. Um, not talents like your abilities, right? So when we talk about stewardship, we usually say time, talents, and treasures. Talents, we mean our abilities. Where God's placed us in life, what he can use us for, and wherever he's placed us. That's our talents, not the money thing necessarily. But he does also give us our to be used for him. But notice the five, right? The, the guy who gets two doesn't complain about the guy who got five. And the guy who gets one doesn't even complain about only getting one. Right? So they're not comparing one another. And in the church, we shouldn't compare one another either. We should recognize that there are different abilities, different uh, circumstances and contexts. We don't look at the other person uh, and say, you know, you should do more. And by the way, that's the other part of this. They, the guy with five doesn't say to the guy with two, why didn't you give You know, I'll give more once you start giving more. No. There's none of that. There's none of that. They're not comparing and talk thinking. They're not giving on the basis of whatever everybody else is doing. They're giving on the basis of their love and trust in the master. You see, the problem with the guy who hides it away, did you listen to him? He thinks of his master how? He was afraid of him. And the master reminds him, you were really afraid. If you had, if, even if you had the best kind of fear, at least you would have got interest on this, right? But he calls him what? What does the master call him? Lazy and wicked. Right? But it's how he views the master. He doesn't trust in the master. He's not participating because he doesn't love the master. And he has what we call Servile fear. Remember, I've talked about this before. Servile fear and filial fear. There's two different types of fear. Servile fear is the fear of a slave. I don't. The master has no regard for me. He doesn't care about me. I'm a piece of property. He, you know, as long as I'm useful, I'm good. But until I'm not, he gets rid of me. The fear of filial fear. The fear of a son recognizes no. I I respect my father, my mother. And I don't want to disappoint them. And so it's based on also having trust and faith in mom and dad. That they love me. Even though, you know, they're making me take out the trash. Even though they're making me do whatever. They love me. Okay? And so it's a different type of fear. And this gentleman does not have that type of proper fear. Uh, because he shows it in his attitude toward the master. Now... By the way, I, I read the Mordecai thing too, right? Uh, because I wanted to tie it into stewardship. It's a great text. We don't hear from Esther too often, but this is a great text. 
and it's a stewardship text in many ways, right? Let me read it again. So we know the story, right? <clears throat> Haman, evil Haman, wants to destroy the Jews because the Jews aren't bowing down to him. They refuse to because they only bow down to God. And, um, and so Mordecai, he wants to especially get rid of Mordecai, right? And Mordecai is related to Esther, and Esther happens to be the queen. And you might think, well, there, that, she's got all the power, right? Yeah, not so much. She's married to Xerxes, the last queen, whoosh, off with her head. Now, you know, uh, in Isles of Underwood, the queen says off with her head. No, this, the king said off with her head. And he's been through several queens. And so if you dis displease the king, Xerxes, that ain't good. <laughs> all right? And so she's worried. She's going to have to. What Mordecai's asking of her is to put her neck on the chopping block. Did you catch it? He says, um, Mordecai says to her, do not think that because you are in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. He may not realize you're a Jew yet, but he will. He will. And then I love this. For if you remain silent this time, Relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. <clears throat> so I'm going to digress a little bit here. Uh, we have a shortage in income coming into our church. We've had some discussions about this in stewardship. And it's a serious matter. You need to be aware of it. That, uh, we're running in the red this year. We've been running in the black for about three years, and now this year, I think we lost some members who moved away, and that helped. Hurt us. But um, what I'm hoping to be, I hope I'm like Mordecai. If you don't help, somebody else will help. Because I trust the Lord. Right? Relief will come from someplace else. But maybe the Lord wants to use you to be part of his joy. Right? He goes on to say, and who knows but that you have come to royal position for such a time as this. This may be your opportunity to step up for such a time as this. And we do it so we can share in our master's joy because we know our master and we know what that joy is. We know what? What do we know about our master? St. Paul reminds us, he who was rich for our sakes became poor. That we might have salvation. That we might share in his joy. He became so poor, he humbled himself to die on the cross for our sake, So that all of our sins are forgiven. Nobody has to be thrown into the place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. For Christ has taken care of our sin problem. And if our Lord will share with us, and here comes the fear thing, why do we sometimes not give? I had an aunt who, I think for like 20 years, she gave five bucks every year. Right? Well, inflation may not have been as bad as it is today, but that five bucks wasn't worth the same, right? Kind of thing, you know? She was afraid. She was saving all this money, right, to take care of herself and this sort of thing. She was afraid. I get it. But if we have one who, as Paul reminds us, did not spare his own son, will he not also give us all other things to take care of us? We know who our master is. We know what he can do in our lives. And I'm telling you, if you talk to people who sometimes are our best contributors, they'll tell you that. When they bless us, the Lord blesses just kind of how he does it and how he works. And so we don't do it as those who are threatened by it, but we do it as those who get to participate, get to be part of our Lord's happiness and joy in the gospel. His happiness and joy in you. That we are his people, that he has claimed us, and he has paid for all of our sins. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And now may the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus always. Amen. Amen.